Welcome back to the Rider Sergeant channel where we talk all things Army. And I'm your host, Sergeant Cruz. And today I want to talk about five regulations that I personally think you should know as a brand new NCO. Again, this is my personal opinion. So without further ado, let's get started. Roger, sir. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, do me a favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Today's shout out goes to at yassyj9132. And Yass says, glad I came across your channel. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Again, guys, this is exactly why I do it. So put the word out. Let's get all this information out so I can continue to give you guys good information. Let's go to the agenda. So which regs do I believe? Again, this is what I believe you should know. We're going to talk about FM 7-22. We're going to talk about ABCP 6-9. We're going to talk about AR 670-1. We're going to talk about ATP 6-22.1, and then we're going to talk about AR 600-20, and then we'll conclude it. And as always, we got to go to the PowerPoint. So these are Sergeant First Class Cruises must-know regulations as a brand new NCO. Let's start off with FM 7-22. And if you didn't know, that's Holistic Health and Fitness. I believe it changed a little bit. Like I think it's 22 point something, but I, I found it under 7-22, 7-22. Now, the reason why I believe that you should know this is because PT is the very first thing you do every single day. You're never going to get away from this unless you're on a, some type of profile or you're just not at the unit. Every single day, we're building camaraderie through blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of tears most of the time. Next thing is NCOs lead PT. At the end of the day, NCOs lead PT. When you go to BLC, what you're going to do is you're going to get tested on PT, PRT, and, D and drill and ceremony. And if you want to know anything about the PRT, I have a video and it just shows how you can remember those PRT drills from beginning to end. I'll Post it somewhere right here. Just click on it and you'll be able to see it. And speaking of BLC, you'll be able to teach it to your soldiers for when they do go to BLC. And another thing is, have you ever been called like randomly? Like it's Sarn Cruz post. And it's like, oh shoot, I didn't know I was in charge of PT. You wouldn't if if you know this, you ain't gotta worry about it. What's what's that favorite saying? Stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. And then it, it just understanding the basic principles of what PRT is about. All right, next is going to be ABCP 600-9, and that is the Army Composition Program. Guess what NCOs do? NCOs do the height weight assessment. You don't see officers doing any of that. You just see the officers getting taped and the commander directing the fact that we're going to do a height and weight this month or in the next month and the month after that. You are the one that's going to be doing this when you get into the NCO ranks. So why not know this? The next thing is that you must know the height weight tables and you must know how to round up or down. When you round the neck, which way do you round? Put it in the comments. When you do the waist, which way do you round? Put that in the comments. We've moved into just one tape site. Where are you rounding, up or down? Put that in the comments. Then next you have how to fill out the 5500 and the 5501. You got to know how to do it. You Yes, you have these, these automatically generating forms. For some reason, the Army doesn't like to use it, but you have them. But you have to know how to fill them out because males have two sites. Females have three sites. But now we have the one site tape test. And until that's 100% through, you have to know this. Then you must know how to enroll the troops into ABCP. 
And the reason why I say you have to know how to enroll the troops in ABCP is because when it's time to, let's say, assist a soldier in getting out the army because they don't meet the height and weight standards, if you're not enrolling them correctly, legal is going to laugh that out of legal. And then they, then you wonder why it's so hard to assist soldiers in getting into their next life, which is the civilian life, because we're not doing it correctly. That being said, you must know all the documents that go along with the ABCP enrollment. There's like seven to nine documents. You have to know where they're going to go in order to get assist assistance. You have to know what documents have to be filled out at what time. You have to understand that they have to see nutritionists, that they have to get the bod pod. They have, there's many things that goes into the ABCP program, ABCP, that we must understand. And in order to assist our soldiers in safely, in, in safely losing weight and within the timelines, you have to know, right? It's two and a half pounds a month. Um, that's the safe thing, or is it per week? Who knows? Put it in the comments below. But you have to know the amount of weight that can be lost in a certain amount of time in a safe manner, which is why they went in years ago, I believe it was uh, 2011 time frame, between 11 and 14. They amended the, the program in, I'm sorry, ABCP 600-9 in reference to seven days before and seven days after when it comes to height and weight. Because soldiers, it says commanders are encouraged, right? But soldiers were just dehydrating themselves in order to meet weight. And then they weren't performing good on the PT test. So you must know how to do this. It helps you, and it definitely helps you help your soldiers. Next thing, we're not going to harp too much on this, but AR670-1. The only thing I would say about this is be careful not to become the AR670-1 NCO. But 670-1, wearing appearance of uniform, of army uniform and insignia, it's the basic standards of the military. Right place, right time, right uniform. And you must understand how to wear each uniform and the components to it. You don't want to be that that soldier that's wearing the wrong badges, the wrong tabs in the wrong spot on the wrong uniform. You got to understand that if you sew your uniform, what happens when you sew it? Can you just sew your uniform and not sew your hat? You have to understand all this stuff. And then the last thing is the do's and don'ts. You can't... it outlines that you can't have your hands in your pocket. You can't be walking and talking on your phone. You cannot do public displays of affection with your spouse. You can do a peck kiss, whatever it is. I'm pretty sure no one's going to be upset about that, but that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about being booed up, like straight up booed up. Um, I also did a video on do's and don'ts. It'll be somewhere here as well. Click on that. But 670-1 is the very, that's literally the basic. It's, it's your wardrobe. Ne oh, I went too far. Next is going to be the ATP 6-22.1, the counseling process. And yes, before you say it, I get it. I don't need to be counseled. I'm a grown-up. I don't need to get it, got it, good. But the Army has a way to be able to assist your troops in developing, and they use the counseling process for it. You got to understand there are three types of counselings, event, performance, and professional growth. Got to know when to use them. The, per, the, the fundamentals, purpose, flexibility, respect, communication, and support. What's the purpose of the counselling? Are you just a one-trick pony when it comes to counselling, or are you flexible? Are you just a directive counsellor, or are you using the non-directive, or are you using a combination of both? Are you respectful to the person you're counselling? If you're not respectful, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to close up. And I'm not going to listen to what you're talking about. Yeah, you got to understand. Establishing two-way communication. And then obviously you got to support the goals that your soldiers is, is trying to um, achieve. Then there's stages to the counseling. You have to identify the reason, the purpose. You have to identify, prepare, conduct, and follow up on the counseling. Many people don't know this, but guess what? If you don't do a fight, if you, if you counsel me, let's say for instance, you counsel me for being late. And then you say, well, for the next two weeks, I need you to text me at this time and I need you to show up at this time. And you give me a certain certain amount of time and you don't follow up on it and say, hey, this worked, this did not work. How do I know the result? So that's called an open counseling. So you have to follow up on the counseling and close it. You have to say, did, did the plan of action actually work? 
And then you have to understand it so you can just do what you're supposed to do. The reason why NCOs don't counsel, or this is my opinion, is because they don't know how to do it. And if you know how to do it, it makes it a lot easier. Off my soapbox. Last but not least, Army AR-600-20 Army Command Policy. It talks about the chain of command and the support channel's responsibility. A lot of the times we say we continue. I can think we're just indoctrinated and saying chain of command, but there's a difference. Chain of command officers, support channel, NCOs. It talks about the open door policy and how you can use it and, and the fact that commanders have to have one. It talks about military discipline and conduct. Within that, there are a couple things more than a couple things. I only just put a couple, but there's extremist activities and there's also a language policy. Then most importantly, it talks about sharp and EL that's nested in there. If you don't know, now, you know, and let's go ahead and close this out. The point is as an NCO, you have the most contact with your soldiers on a day-to-day -day basis. And in order to assist them, you must be well-rounded. You must understand what's going on with these soldiers. You must understand how to help them. You must understand these five basic, I, I say again, these five basic regulations that you must understand, in my opinion, in order to start off as an NCO. I'm not saying these are the only ones. These are the ones that you need to understand initially. So that's it for today. If you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be hit to the next video that I put out there. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and email me at rogersarrant at gmail.com. You can use that same email if you're trying to be on the show. If you don't have time to watch this on YouTube, you can go to any streaming platform. I'm on it, Roger Sarrant, and you can listen to it while you're either in the gym driving to work, or just hanging out. Um, also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. I think follow me is the word, but follow me there. And they're all at Roger Sarrant. And lastly, remember, you don't have to embrace the suck if you got the right tools in your ruck. I'm Sarrant Cruz, and I'm out. Roger Sarrant.